Hey, hi everybody, welcome back from the break. Um, the next talk in this room is from Colin Mulner. Uh, it's called Events that Hacks Against Pocket PC Phones. And he will now show you how you can own such a phone using an MMS. Enjoy. So, hello everybody. Hello. Hello. Okay. So the talk is uh, was already like six months old. I did the first um, version of it at DEF CON, but yeah, I guess nobody writes the slides as usual. So new stuff for everybody. So yeah, this time, actually today, right after the talk, I will release the full source code um, to the exploit with all necessary tools so you can have some fun. Yeah. Okay, the, the, what's the talk about? So it's about attacking pocket PC smartphones and the vulnerability analysis uh, uh, of phones or yeah, smartphones and what's necessary to actually do some fuzzing on a phone. Um, yeah, so we're going to fuzz and look at the MMS service and in particular the client side, so the thing that runs on your phone. Yeah, first we're going to show you um, the current uh, state of the art attacks against mobile phones and smartphones. Very, very short overview of over pocket PC. And then we're going to look at the multimedia messaging service and then we do some testing. Um, and then I show you how to own a phone via MMS. And then we have some conclusions and maybe some discussion later. So the basic um, state-of-the-art attacks is, yeah, one is Bluetooth, where you basically take control over a phone, so you can initiate calls, send MMS, uh, send text messages, steal some data like the phone book, maybe the nude pictures on your phone you made from your girlfriend. So watch out, um, yeah, and some denial-of-service attacks. And of course, there are all those third-party applications from all the hobby programmers which didn't think about security. So you can do some, maybe so even some code injection, of course, denial of service attacks. Some fun, but we can do better. Um, so of course, there were like early, earlier attacks against MMS, which were not really attacks against MMS, which just used MMS message as an um, transport mechanism for uh, um, installing malware trojans. And most of these worms were written for Symbian, and they required a, a lot of user, actual user interaction to actually, before the um, worm or whatever is finally installed and running and is able to spread, which is from an attack, atta from a serious attack, um, attacker's view, not, not too cool. and. The, the basic, you know, the most common examples are Comvoria and the Mabir worm. So, and there are these older SMS-based attacks, which are really, really super lame, but <laughs> they work. So there is like this Nokia V card, like the business card thing, which has <laughs> really a format string vulnerability in the parser. So fun, but yeah. And the Siemens crash because you have an unusual Sorry for that. Some unusual characters in an SMS message. And the phone basically crashed or reboots. <coughs> uh, if you have any questions, just call for the microphone guy and ask. I won't bite. So of course, other people before me looked at um, Pocket PC and what they can do to attack them. And of course, again, third-party applications like FTP servers were exploited. Um, there is actually a very nice buffer overflow in the Bluetooth stack of, of Pocket PC, where you can actually do, uh, already do real code injection on an out-of-the-box application. But Tim, the guy who found it, decided to not release it because the, I, I don't think it was Microsoft, but whoever pub, um, wrote the stack said, oh, we're not going to fix it. 
people should buy new phones, so he never released it. It's a really nice attack, and there's a Bluetooth OBEX push attack where you can just bypass the authentication and have full access to the file system. The active sync attack, yeah, it's just a denial of service, and there are these like local attacks, which are, yeah, you can insert an SD card and auto run application. So, well, it's not really interesting for us because we want to do remote stuff. So, yeah. So, Pocket PC is the um, yeah the Windows CE version that's used on PDAs and smartphones. Yeah, most most of you probably heard of Windows CE, and it just stands for the Windows version for consumer electronics. It basically runs on x86, SH, and ARM. But yeah, I'm I only work with ARM-based devices because yeah, most phones PDAs are ARM-based. And the current version is 5.0 um, or 5x by now. So, but um, all the devices I looked at are uh, run 4.2, so the Windows C.net. But yeah, so but there, yeah, as I said, like um, there are many Windows CE 4.2 devices, and so yeah, it's still, so it, it's it's not like outdated. So so the sample, so some some sample devices I was working with is just. Yeah, basically a PDA with a with a GSM chip included. Um, just yeah, turn your PDA into a phone. So yeah, nothing too too interesting. Besides the wireless LAN, which we'll show you later, is really makes a nice attack ag uh, against these devices. Yeah, Windows the Windows CE OS is pretty 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 bad. It's, they don't have real virtual address spaces. Yeah, they are limited to 32 um, um, concurrent processes. You don't have a, a thread limit, but normally you don't have a lot of memory, so that basically limits the number of threads. So it's, yeah, the 20, uh, 32 concurrent process. So in um, the limitation is uh, especially interest interesting for writing exploits. So. Keep that in mind for later. So security, haha. <laughs> Windows, <laughs> Windows C. Yeah. There is. It's a single user OS, or I don't think they have the the notion of users. Um, so you can lock your device, and but that's optional. Um, yeah, any process can basically access any resource in the system. So really, once you're you run code, you can do whatever you want. You can access any file in the file system. Start Bluetooth, make Bluetooth connections, access the mobile phone interface. So yeah, there is no real security. So it's it's kind of funny to have that on a mobile phone. Yeah, I'm not actually going to talk too much about the exploiting ten techniques or just just very very limited because it's so well covered by now. There was like a good talk at 2004 who started every, um, the whole pocket PC thing. There is and then 2003 talks in 2005, or actually two talks in a paper. So anybody who's interested has plenty of stuff to read. And yeah, Windows CE exploitation, buffer overflows, stack smashing is like on the PC. You revise, uh, overwrite the return address and hijack the control flow of the program and it's yours. So it's, yeah, just have to inc uh, yeah, take care about the special um, stuff you have to do on the ARM architecture. But so, so there are some, some basic issues. Of course, you don't have a shell. So just like uh, exploiting and running a remote shell, a bind shell, by connect shell, whatever, is not possible. So you actually have to implement whatever you want to do. So if you want to, I don't know, re re read a file, you really have to like implement the whole whole thing. Um, so on the the slot thing is the other problem. Since you don't have a virtual address space for each application, um, you have to actually guess which in which memory part the application is executing. 
in order to hit the right um, return address, which where you ha actually have to do some guessing. The guessing is not as hard if you do some some statistics and look, oh, okay, it's basically always the same. But yeah, it's not, you, you will probably never be able to have like a one shot, 100% secure way of um, exploiting a vulnerability. But that's okay, as we will see later. So yeah, the multimedia messaging servers, probably like, everybody knows about it. Germany or Europe basically known as MMS. In the US they say picture messaging because they don't like technical acronyms over there. So yeah, it's basically uh, a, multi, a multimedia um, or a multimedia content transport system you can like just stuff pictures, audio, video, and of course text and such a message and send it to the other device. But yeah, you can also of course include other data like the Zimbian worms just put in Zimbian installer in it. So yeah, you can just send ever send whatever you want. And like email, you basically need an infrastructure so. You send your MMS to a server, and that sends to another server, which then sends it to the client. So you need some infrastructure, and yeah, of course you have to pay a fee per for each message, which is also kind of interesting. So that's like the cool explanation they have on their standards. This is really p pretty picture. This is really pretty colors. So yeah, you can put a picture in it and play some sound. So yeah. So the MMS architecture is actually, or the MMS system is actually a total ripoff because it's not a, a mobile service. It's just like some crappy IP service. You have basically an HTTP server and some a web gateway and just transport your data over HTTP and web. Of course you use um, GPS for it. And you have yeah, an MMS server, a relay, the web gateway, which also does some push proxying. It will explain it more in more detail in just a second. And you have, of course, it utilizes MMS. So, yeah, just like all the all the crap we actually know about like HTTP, IP, web, and yeah, many people who like play with fronts, of course, know SMS and what you can do with more than just send messages. So. Yeah, in the first picture you see how an MMS is actually sent. So first, of course, you create the, the message and the sender basically just opens the GPS connection and does a, a VAP post, which is tr just translated to an HTTP post, which goes to the MMS relay. The MMS relay okay. takes it, part, does some parsing, stores it, and then forwards it. So it's pretty straightforward. Very easy to implement your own MMS um, application. Yeah, and the receiving is a little more interesting since uh, it also utilizes SMS. So in the first step, the MMS server wants its yeah first yeah um, the, if the MMS server is for, the same for the sender and receiver, there is no another step. But if it's on a different network, the one MMS server from the one network just sends it to the MMS server of the another network. So uh, the the final MMS server just like initiates a notification which is sent over the web push gateway which just converts it to an SMS and sends it to the receiver. And the receiver sees, oh, there is a new message. So just do some web get, HTTP get, and get the message. Very simple, but costs you like 50 cents each. So MMS messages are kind of Boring. They're most structured like uh, email. It's a multi-part MIME message encoded in binary. Um, yeah, you have some headers, which is also binary control information. It's really like email, just a little bit different. You have yeah, very boring slide, but you have different different message types for each action. So yeah, f just for the blog, so really want to go into depth. So the MMS user agent, that's actually the, the thing we're going to attack. It's the client application, basically. They call it MMS user agent. And the fun thing, it, is, it has to handle multiple types of networks. So first, it has to understand the whole SMS, VAP push, 
WAP business, and then it has, of course, to the IP stuff, the WAP po post and get. Um, and it has, yeah, it has to do a lot of parsing. So it has to parse um, as like the SIML or WML for the presentation part. That's basically like HTML. I will show you like, a little bit more. And of course, like all the image formats and maybe movies, audio. So there are a lot of possibilities for programmers to make mistakes in all these parsers. So yeah, yeah. So the yeah. So the actual client, the MMS client, is not written by Microsoft. They just bought it from ArcSoft, small, small company in, uh, in the US, which really doesn't care about security. I, I talk to them, they don't care. <laughs> or maybe now they do, but they didn't tell me if they do. So yeah, and the actual application is called Tmail Access. So maybe you want to start your PDA and look if you if you have like a vulnerable device. I actually only tested two different versions, so maybe other versions are vulnerable too, but these versions definitely are. So, so if we if we go if we want to attack something or attack the user agent, um, we first need to see okay what kind of inputs does the user agent have. Um, because inputs equals possible attack vector. Um, and since we have some infrastructure in the back end which handles each message, we really have to look at the, um, at the infrastructure because it could do sanitization. Like if you have like some invalid um, uh, message, um, like an email, if you like, if the email is in the wrong, if the header is something, there's something wrong, maybe it's, um, Rejected and for SM, uh, for MMS it's the same. It looks into some headers and says, "Oh, maybe no, maybe yes." And so you actually have to like do some testing to actually see what's going on there. And yeah, so and since we pay money for each MMS, um, we started implementing like a small virtual MMS infrastructure, so we can do our testing offline without. Um, uh, bothering some uh, for, um, mobile phone companies network and also we save some money so that's also very fun and the actual testing I used fuzzing because yeah, no source code available and very fast results so for the MMS user agent we have identified um, the notification that's the thing that goes over SMS before the actual message is received um, a little, just very, a very small thing that fits in one SMS, some header fields. Then we actually have the real message, which is delivered via or received via uh, VAP HTTP GET. And then we have um, the message, the actual message body, which is, I, I took it I, as a separate part because the encoding is totally different and as we found out, most um, MMS providers don't look into the body, so you can just place anything you want into the body. It's also, of course, carried over um, WAP HTTP get. So yeah, for the infrastructure, we basically um, set up a, a small fuzzer to check um, what kind, what parts of of, the, of an MMS message are sanitized or validated in any way, because. Yeah, we, if you find some vulnerability in the phone, but it's in a field that's um, sanitized, then it's it's worthless because if you send it to the to, into the infrastructure, the infrastructure just discards it. It's it's useless. So we did some testing, yeah, to see that we have uh, that we yeah. So we can just have like a list of of good for us uh, parts of the message which we can use. Um, yeah, as I said, we did we just did like very low profile fuzzing because we didn't want to trigger anything at the at the mobile phone service provider. And yeah, as we found like the message header is heavily sanitized. Most of the fields are not usable for attacks, but the message body is just yeah, you know, they don't don't look at it. Just all the headers around. So now to something interesting. The new message notification is, as I said, 
delivered via Vapush, via SMS. And SMS also has the uh, notion of ports, basically like TCP IP. So, you c so uh, binary SMS is sent from this port 9200 to port 9, uh, 9, 2948. It's a it's an SMS port. So the con so on on the pocket PC there is the the push router is it basically routes um, different VAP push types through different applications and if it sees like application MMS message it just says okay MMS client take it and the fun thing is who would have guessed how how the the client gets gets um, gets to know the URL of the of the actual MMS message, yeah, they just sent like an URL in the SMS which just says HTTP uh, double uh, uh, double point whatever, yeah, slash slash, <laughs> and yeah, MMS normally like something like mobile service provider name dot MMS or slash MMS, and then some some funky looking number, and that's basically yeah, they just send you here is an HTTP URL, get it? It's your MMS. So on the very and the good, the fun thing um, is, yeah, you can also um, send this notification over UDP to the same port on the wireless interface. That means you can you don't you don't need MMS to actual uh, you don't need an actual infrastructure to do testing. So yeah, so here's a, a, a packet dump where you just see the MIME type in the beginning. Then the phone number, no, the, no, the transaction ID, the phone numbers, which are not highlighted, the subject, and the message URL. Yeah, your mess, your MMS service provider, and then some ID. That's what your phone gets. Just HTTP get me this. So we can use that to actually attack phones already over wireless LAN. We just say, okay, um, send this packet to. This device and the phone will say, "Oh wow, there's a new MMS waiting for me. Let's dial up GPRS." And then it makes also this like ping sound, which is very annoying, <laughs> especially if you do it like a thousand times in a row. The, the, and the phone, of course, like starts like eating memory, memory, memory. Then it tries like three times for each MMS to receive it. Yeah, you can like fill up the inbox. It's quite fun, and yeah, you have to delete e even as yeah. May maybe that's only true for my old devices. On both devices, you had to delete each notification message one by one. So click, delete, click, delete. <laughs> so it's really not fun to delete more than a thousand messages. So and the fun thing is, yeah, you can send it over broadcast <laughs> against the broad to the broadcast IP address. <laughs> So yeah, you don't even need to scan for a device or send millions of packets. It's just like one packet, one packet, one packet. Eat. So and to basic to attack it, you just need to have a unique transaction ID and content location, the URL. So yeah, very easy to build yourself. But I was nice enough to release a proof of concept in August. So yeah, maybe you want to try right now. Maybe somebody is playing <laughs> is playing with their device online. Yeah. So just a sample screenshot. Your 1,000 unwritten messages, and of course the application allows you to like set the sender string and the subject, so you maybe can send some nice message like, "Hey, update your pocket PC," or "Hey, get a personal firewall for your pocket PC," <laughs> if there is something like that. So yeah. So yeah, since I use fuzzing, I I sh will shortly, very shortly explain fuzzing. As yeah, maybe somebody was to Gadi's talk in the morning, or so. You basically send halfway valid input or a better, um, almost valid input um, to a device in order to find any bugs or exploitable vulnerabilities. And fuzzing really is. Or for me, really, it turned out to be the best method um, to do v pen testing or vulnerability analysis if you don't have the source, co source code. 
And yeah, so, but the problem here is you have to pay for each message, or we thought that would be a problem because we want to do fuzzing, and that normally means you really want to um, use a lot of different inputs, so you have to really send thousands. I guess, we, like, I don't know how many, but multiple, yeah, maybe like millions message, I don't know. We, it was pretty automized, so. And you don't really don't want to pay like 10 cent or maybe even a cent per message. That's like too much. But as I said, we can ab abuse the um, UDP port thing on Pocket PC to just send our own, uh, to use our, or build our own virtual MMS infrastructure. So you basically take some web server, I took Apache, a web gateway, and something to generate um, MMS messages. You can really con configure in your in your pocket PC phone, you can just like say, yeah, use the wireless LAN interface for MMS, use this server, use this IP, use this port. And then you can just generate a message, dump it on the on the Apache server, S just send the URL, um, take the take the URL and send it via UDP. And your pocket PC phone will happily go over wireless LAN to um, your web gateway and say, yeah, get me that I, um, URL and works l like it would over GPRS. So we have a very nice way to do the fuzzing. And that's like really one, that's like really a, um, a major, um, what, what like saved us a lot of, um, a lot of hassle and cause in the beginning we thought, yeah, we have to like, spend a huge amount of money for testing, but in the end we didn't, I think I've, yeah, I bought some f SMS stuff once uh, to do some other testing, but yeah, we actually didn't pay for, for one SMS during fuzzing. So yeah, I did actually some very, very brain dead low, <laughs> yeah, some very stupid fuzzing. I just like look for basic buffer overflows because yeah, I'm lazy and I don't want to do string format stuff, so basically I just like say, okay, variable length field, just put a very long string in there. Um, did that was like, yeah, almost everything I could find, which is variable length. Then, yeah, attach attach the uh, the, um, the Windows um, uh, embedded Visual C debugger to the target, and then just send a message, send a message. Yeah, so yeah, after each UDP message, just gets the message and hopefully at some point the debugger will say, oh, exception, and if you get the exception, there is it. It's basically like you do fuzzing on your, on your PC just with a little more stuff involved, like your nice HTTP server and you ha actually have to sit in front of the machine because it cannot, I, I wasn't able to like auto detect if the device like somehow freeze and because sometimes it would respond to ping, so, and sometimes not, even if it was running or crashed. So, yeah, you'd basically sit in front of your PC, drink some coffee, and press space, next, next. Worked pretty well. So, that's how uh, an MMS message looks that's transferred from, from the MMS server to your phone. You have this, in the beginning, it's just the binary header again, and then you have, yeah, some text. The green part is actually just well, a text file which is included in the MMS, and then you have the SIML file, which is again the HTTP-like formatting for the message. Um, yeah. So it's it's a multi-part MIME in binary. So as I said, yeah, the really, really the advantage is this: if you do testing in your own infrastructure, you can really do deterministic, uh, deterministic testing because. Yeah, the phone service provider may be down or may discard your uh, message or do whatever you want, or whatever they want, not whatever I want. So you can really test, um, also yeah, you can really also test parts of the message which should be otherwise sanitized. Because maybe yeah, you're a good guy and you actually want to like find the bugs to fix them instead of just attacking them. So you also want to find the parts that are actually not attackable but would also cause a crash. So you cannot do that in, in a real environment. And it's faster, like over wireless LAN, there's no delay of the SMS, which could also be delayed by the provider. It's, yeah, I would say like 10 times 
but maybe you can, it's, it's faster, but at least 10 times. And of course, usage fees. I think in Germany it's like 49 cents per message. So, yeah, 100 message or 1,000 messages, that's quite some, some amount of money. So after a big fuzzing session, you could like, instead of paying the money for the for fuzzing, you could like buy like 10 devices or something. Yeah, yeah, and f like if you're just a student, there's like no way you want to pay that kind of money. So some the first the first box like in the no, even the no, in the small notification message, it's just either sendable over UDP or or SMS. There are already quite some number of bugs. So if you make the transaction ID like really long. MMS composer like one also uh, one five also dies, but that's the length for the version two, and it just like oh whoops. Content location two and yeah, unfortunately you cannot use it for code injection, also because the messages are normally very small, so you could maybe ins include a very small payload, but the bugs I couldn't override the return address, so yeah. But the fun thing is, the notification flutter tool now can prevent everybody from using email, SMS, and MMS while the wireless LAN is switched on because everything is in one application. And as soon as you're connected to the wireless LAN, it just sends us one message and your client just crashes. So for maybe for MMS, that's not too bad because you can switch off your um, the wireless. But if you want to read email, yeah, maybe over GPS, but it's it's kind of fun that you can actually like uh, keep people from using a totally another service by while you while using or by abusing the MMS infra infrastructure on the device. It's, I thought that was like really funny. Then we have some more in the receive uh, in the actual MMS message that's transported to the device in the headers. There are multiple overflows. Yeah, they're kind of interesting, but. The problem is the, the infrastructure and the filtering. So yeah, I didn't look too deep into that. So um, so in the body content, uh, there. So there are like more over just plain buffer overflows and a lot of them. But yeah, you cannot uh, exploit most of the stuff most of the stuff in the real world because the uh, the message would never be accepted by the senders um, or by the attackers MMS server. So yeah, you can, you in, in the real world you cannot, or um, maybe you can, let's, let's, let's see later, can use it for, for attacks. Yeah. So because if you like set up your own MMS server, you cannot, you, you don't have to actually submit a message, so you can just like build your build your bad MMS message with like all the nice overflows in there and just deliver it to the to some client. So what you actually need to do, you just need to send this notification message and say, hey, here's a new message, try and get it. But in like I did most of my testing in the US and for some reason um, even if I, I was told the web gateway could go to other um, IPs and just talk to them and get um, MMS messages from there. I wasn't really able to do it, but actually it wasn't that much of, of, uh, of a focus for me, so I didn't do the testing very very well, so yeah, maybe you guys should like test like all the German for phone providers since I released the source. You have, have something to do and see if you can actually bring them to or yeah. If if it's possible to to run your own MMS server and make I don't know T-Mobile E plus whatever like the web gateway to actually get, go to your MMS server and then you can use like basically all the of the attacks I found. But there is SIML, the cool um, HTML for MMS. Totally, I don't know, kind of useless. It looks like it really looks like uh, HTTP uh, HTML. Sorry. Or, but it's basically just some XML-based language. Again, like everybody needs XML, so also the MMS guys need need XML. 
what it basically says, okay, display the picture here, display the text here, wait five seconds, switch to the next picture, something like that. And as I said before, the message body is not, um, it's not sanitized or any, any kind of validation is happening. So it's really the perfect attack worker if we could only find something there. So that's actually the, an SIML file, very simple. And yeah, guess what, why I highlighted these two parameters? Because, yeah, the, the parser is actually vulnerable. You can actually just stuff whatever you want into the tags. And yeah, <laughs> the parser just dumps it onto the stack for you. Uh, really, really simple. Like, nobody ever implemented, uh, like, parsing uh, uh, fields in HTML, like ID or whatever source equals something in double quotes. That's like really, really hard to implement. So they have like two part, like two two parts of the message at least. Like I stopped, I stopped fuzzing after I found these two. Probably it's like the same parser for fields, but it's it's really it's really that damn stupid. So so we now have something that you can use for an attack. Um, but yeah. To actually attack something, you actually need your, your own MMS user agent, so something that um, actually like, sends a message to your infrastructure, your provider, service provider's infrastructure. And yeah, so it's, it's, it was actually really, really simple, since I already had the message generator from the fuzzer based on MMS lib, um, or like on a much improved version of it. And the WAP client is, yeah, it's basically just, yeah, a, a stupid WAP client, like 10 lines of Java. Yeah, sorry for all you guys. If you want to try it, you have to install Java. But I hate it, but I was really too lazy to do it and see if it was just like 10 lines in Java. And then you just use your mobile phone and dial up your GPRS, get the MMS, get the, all the values for the, the IPs and stuff for the MMS relay from from the how-to section of your of your mobile phone provider. And yeah, unfortunately you really have to use GPS because they block their infrastructure, um, um, they block access to the infrastructure from the internet or just have it on a private IP range. So you have to invest some money into, into GPS. So yeah, the first mobile phone remote code, uh, uh, code execution exploit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, in August it was the first one, so everybody was like crazy. Woo! <laughs> yeah, and in in comparison with other attacks against mobile phone, it's real, really code injection execution. It's not a Trojan or anything the user has to execute. You basically have to open or view the message in order to trigger it. So maybe you need some social engineering in your subject line, maybe, or you just want like a new cell phone from your provider, or I don't know. Yeah, some some clients, I guess, um, open the new message by itself. I, it happened like ten times on my device. Maybe it's like a stupid bug, or I don't know. But yeah, if it auto automatically opens um, a message, then you basically have uh, not even a, you, you have like a really remote exploit without any user interaction. But yeah, you still have the the minor complications. Um, that apply if, uh, for Windows C exploitation, the return address guessing, but yeah, it works and we'll show you why, yeah. So yeah, open the message, yeah. Yeah, I really did it in, in March, in March this year, so it's kind of old already, but yeah. So yeah, since, yeah, I didn't, I didn't release uh, the exploit code at DEF CON, so I had this stuff for like all, for the like five people I knew who could like write Windows CE shell code because I guess like, oh, maybe they want to do it or maybe they want to tell me I, I fucked up. So yeah, that's kind of useless. But yeah, the slot, the slot part is really interesting because you actually have 32 slots, but of course some slots will be used by system processes and maybe you start your application right in the beginning and yeah, the, my, my statistic basically showed me is these five, uh, four slots. Actually, there's a five one which I did find after some more testing. But 
you can pretty, be pretty sure that if you use one of these slots for your return address, you will get it. So maybe you just like send four messages and if so maybe the, 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 your victim is like stupid enough to open all of them because, oh, maybe oh, it didn't, it just crashed. Oh, maybe the other one works. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So yeah, the screenshots, is, yeah. I have a very bad digital, had a very bad digital camera at that point, but yeah, since I couldn't, I couldn't do a re really nice demo because yeah, you're yeah, getting a nice, a nice video camera for for your PDA is not that, not that easy, and it's a hell, a hell of a mess for uh, to set it up. So, just, just a picture. So, and of course, I told Microsoft and ArcSoft about that before, even before DevCon, and they, oh yeah, thank you, and uh, yeah, we're going to fix it super fast, and oh yeah, and then after two weeks, yeah, we have this patch, but all our OEMs need to test it, so maybe, I don't know, maybe we release it whenever, and now nothing nothing happened. There is no updates. I asked other people who always also work with pocket PC devices and cell phones, and they oh yeah, we didn't see anything, nothing happened. So yeah, so even if they fixed it, I would have released it, So, but now they really have a reason to fix it. And the URL will be, will be live right after the talk. You can click on the file, but yeah, nothing. You cannot download it yet. It really has like everything. Like I have my, the, the WAP client, the, the 10 lines of Java, and all the MMS generators, some prepared um, shell code, and yeah, and, and a nice how to about how to do it. So of course, since I actually did that for for getting my master's degree, my professor kind of said like, yeah, maybe we should think about defense, not only <laughs> about the attacks. That looks way better in your in your thesis. <laughs> it was kind of that. So yeah, what you basically can do, you can just like for for the notification flooding, you could go and just have a small packet filter on your phone. Um, then for the MMS message, you may want to run like an IDS on the phone uh, on the message, uh, phone service provider side, so like even filter the message out before they even reach your network. Um, yeah, of course, like an IDS antivirus on your phone. Yeah, and then if you have if you manage to run your own rogue um, MMS. Um, MMS, um, not, uh, MMS server on, you, yeah, you maybe think, oh, I guess they filter notifications because uh, they should be the only one to, to send them out. So, but of course, no, nobody filters anything there. Why? So, yeah. But that's actually what they should do. They should filter binary MMS, especially the notification stuff, install like IDSs, virus scanners on the network. And yeah, for the users, just install the firmware updates when they really, when they finally make them available. So yeah, we're almost done. So the conclusions, since it was basically not, okay, I want to attack your mobile phone, it was basically, okay, what do we need to do in order to do penetration testing for a mobile device? And especially a phone, because you have all the infrastructure, and that was kind of a challenge, and a nice a nice thing we found is like this really the the attack for the two vector attack against one application wi fi s m s m m s against one application that was kind of fun, yeah, we found like yeah ten ten bugs more it depends on how you see it if it's if it's another bug or a same bug in a in in the in another message and yeah it's bas as far as we know the the first code injection execution attack against the mobile phone. And yeah, if we see more for, uh, more stuff like that, this will be a real pain in the ass if you constantly have to worry about your phone getting a, getting a worm, maybe. So yeah, oh, of course, in the future, maybe we want to look at other, other parts of the multimedia content because I didn't even start looking at like image or movie or whatever parsers. And there's like a whole lot, especially if you consider um, 
that Microsoft basically just ported like their stuff, like all the image libraries to Windows Mobile. Like, does anybody remember the WMF bug, the this Windows Meta file? Maybe the same implementation is on your on on the Pocket PC. I haven't tried because like yeah, we want to show our point and do our fuzzing, and that's yeah. So more and more MMS user agents are out there: Symbian, PalmOS, and now maybe in the Linux phones. Yeah. So and yeah, and the MMS infrastructure. We did like some really minor fuzzing, and we played with it a bit. But I guess there are many, many more possibilities if you maybe think about spoofing MMS oh, or stuff like that. And of course, yeah, Windows CE5, which I have, I want to look at it. And yeah, yeah, I've done, I've done some reading, but I haven't got a device yet. But that should be really interesting, especially my, because Microsoft claims it's so super secure. And yeah, so I'm working on that. And that's basically it. So I <laughs> so questions? Everybody is stunned and like, oh, 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 need to switch off phone fast. <laughs> M microphone? Or speak up. Can you show the address again? The URL for the download? Yeah. Sure. I guess you want that one. But if you go, just go to my pocket PC section, there, sh uh, there are the links. I will put there a, a link and to the stuff and the slides right after the talk. So yeah, happy downloading. And don't try to download it now, because the file is not, not readable by the web server as of now. So you have to wait like half an hour. And yeah, I guess. More question, otherwise, yeah, okay. <laughs>